Let's begin with um, the president of the Nigerian Medical Association, Bala Audu, who expressed concern over the decreasing rate of doctors available to tend to patients in Nigeria. He pointed out the ratio of doctor patients in the country is spiraling downward and it's 1,000% lesser than that of the World Health Organization recommended. The, he further highlighted poor working condition as one of the causes of this JAPA syndrome, uh, the way fast luring medical practitioners abroad. Let's talk this through by speaking with uh, public health consultant Tuyi Mebamadu. Thank you so much for joining us, Anybody. Dr. Hello, Mibamadu. studio is not on. Dr. Tuyi, can you hear me? Dr. Tuyi, can you hear me? All right, I think uh, we'll, we'll have um, uh, enough time to connect with um, Dr. Tui. But then if you look at um, the issue of Japa syndrome, uh, I remember having a conversation with someone was it yesterday or a few days ago about Nigerians moving, some who are in the medical, medical line, others who are not, because they always look for ways to get into uh, or get abroad and start doing one or two mini jobs, some get into caregiving and all of that. But those who are professionals, the doctors, they're also wanting out of the country, uh, looking for greener pastures and finding ways to you know, better the lot uh, by leaving the country and getting a better job outside of the country because of what they consider the higher and, and better pay. And uh, this is a call to action, especially for uh, Nigeria generally, in all, you know, in all sectors, all areas of our infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, for these doctors who are complaining of you know, uh, poor working conditions, when you go out, you see how well they are treated, how much they earn, they even earn hourly. So you can just uh, imagine how much difference it would actually make. Mm. Now, having this figure, it's uh, quite, you know, different from the World Health Organization right. standard. Having one doctor to 1,000 patients, uh, this in a way means that we will be losing lives every day because it's actually not possible right. to be able to address this. All right, um, let's uh, speak with um, public health consultant uh, Tuyi Mebawandu. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Mebawandu. hope you can hear me very well. Yes, very, very well, Dr. Omi okay, uh, well, As we grapple with the stark reality of the 1,000% uh, deficit in the doctor-patient ratio, uh, can you help us elaborate on the far-reaching consequences this is having on our health sector? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, the challenge of human resources for health is global. Um, of course, we know that for us to deliver all the health um, services that we so need, for us to respond to diseases, for us to be able to ensure that we, the, the whole community, the whole country is healthy, we need health workers. We need health workers. So um, the health workers we need must be proportionate to the population and the pattern of diseases, that, of course, and the threats that are confronting us, very essential. Worldwide, more than 10 million shortage of health workers in Africa, 6.1 million shortage by 2030. That is the figure we are faced with. But if you go back, come to Nigeria, the figure of the number of doctors in Nigeria, for example, we're using doctors right now as the, as the point um, of discussing the short, general shortage of health workers. The number of doctors we have um, in Nigeria the best figure we've had is about 30,000. Some say 24,000, some say 30,000. For a country of 220 million people, of course, this is scandalous. It's, 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 it means that, in reality, we will not be able to respond appropriately to health challenges. We won't be able to, of course, it, it was obvious, even when cholera came and we had a lot of things that we had to be running here and there. Mm -hmm. It was obvious during COVID that we were not having enough doctors. So we, we won't be able to respond won't be able to actually keep the people in the country healthy. So it has been established from, from various write-up researches that the number, the, the quality of uh, health you have depends on the number of doctors available, health workers available in your country. So it is not just uh, an issue of health concern. It is an economic concern. It is a social concern. It's a security concern that it is important that you have the right number of health workers for the, your population and they are deployed appropriately. Of course, we know that um, we, all, a 
lot of factors, as, as we're talking now, we know that even Nigerian doctors are mainly in UK, in US, in Canada, Australia, uh, UAE, South Africa, and the Caribbean. That is where we have the majority of our doctors, they've actually emigrated. The most even concerning part of it is that a lot of them that didn't emigrate chose not to even work at all. Mm. They are in Nigeria, they are into real estate, they are into telecommunication, they are doing other businesses. So we have both draining externally and uh, that draining internally. That's happening in Nigeria now. And we are not addressing it the way we should address it. Of course, we know all the factors. The factors that pull them away from medical profession or pull them away from Nigeria and the push factor, the factor that push them from medical profession or push them from Nigeria. So these are the factors, of course, the, the, the career progression, the career progression is very key. People want to have credibility. Uh, people want to boast that, you know, I schooled in Harvard, I schooled in Cambridge, I schooled in uh, Yale, I schooled at least that, uh, you know, I'm trained doctor, so-so trained doctor. And of course, if, if, if in the past, it was not the case, but now it has been the, a bragging right for people. So I also want to go abroad because people tra train abroad, people that have that connection abroad, are valued far above those ones that probably train in Nigeria. And, and it was not the case before. But you know, like everything that changes, that also affects health, health, uh, healthcare. And in addition, the condition of service, the remuneration, um, very important, the career progression, the care for the family and children, the security issue. One of the main challenges that's actually affecting doctors uh, running away from the country are even factors outside the health system. That's right. The crunch the crushing economy. The crushing economy is an issue. Insecurity is an issue. Poor infrastructure. If you have to move from one place to another to attend to a client, it's difficult. If you want to use ambulance, they are not in existence. There are factors outside the health sector that are affecting all the people. Of course, indeed, we are not training enough. That's, mm -hmm. that's certain. Even if you train, you are not deploying them appropriately. You are not employing them. You are not even incentivizing them. So it's a lot of complex factor. Education is a big All right, issue. Dr. Tui. Um, I'm sure um, most of these factors that you have mentioned are also affecting other sectors and not just the healthcare uh, system. But for us to better understand how urgently this needs to be addressed, what is the appropriate or the World Health Organization standard of a doctor-to-patient ratio? One to 600. <laughs> That's a total of that. If, if you agree, or want to, so that means that we have more than 200,000 doctors that we need in Nigeria. One to 600. And if we're having one to about even more than 1,000 now, mm. okay, that becomes concerning, okay? So that means that we're not there. But as much as we're not there, uh, what do we do? I agree that all those factors affect other, health, other, other professions. But look at the time it, it takes to train a doctor. Mm. It's very challenging. Whereas you can roll out plenty of lawyers. You cannot easily rule out many doctors. Mm. It's difficult. You need seven years plus five years and extra training. And then even the, um, I remember what, what trended the other time on, 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 on social media. The horrendous work hours. The doctors stress, they overwork. What of even the, the interns died while overworking. Okay? Mm. So these are factors, even in the health system, that make people to wonder. Is it worth it to be a doctor? Is it worth it to actually practice? If I'm a doctor, is it worth it to actually practice in Nigeria? Mm. Is it worth it to even practice medicine in Nigeria? Why don't I go to other, other areas where I can have skin and then, you know, just work? I, I, I was seeing quite a lot of doctors doing that. I have a very good friend that's into real estate and is making a lot of money. Mm. So, in reality, factors that has to do with the, uh, even the country itself, it's affecting many professions. That's it's right. Affecting well, it's, it's actually a whole lot, you know, happening, especially when we're looking for solutions. You know, we've been talking about doctors, you know, contributing to the concept of the brain drain. Uh, in fact, it's actually mainly used for them. Uh, but the Jaguar syndrome, which is now very, very popular, uh, popular we have uh, Nigeria spending a whole lot to train these medical doctors in schools. But if you ask most of these students, the next thing they want to do is, after graduation, NYC, they want to get out of the country. But with this inadequate equipment, which they also complain about, subpar salary structures that drive the healthcare uh, professionals abroad, what do you think can be the concrete steps we need to take 
to mitigate against this, you know, uh, the, the plan to want out of the country? Uh, um, uh, honestly, um, it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress as we um, systematic, uh, systematically um, uh, work on many of those factors, both internal, external, and even national. Uh, we look at what we need to do um, uh, right now. Now, um, we have to address, to address the attrition, first and foremost. You have to really rethink your compensation mechanism. Compensation is not just about salaries and wages alone. Compensation means that, in reality, if you're a doctor, we are working with me, I've given you a house, that, that means that you can pay over 10 years. It means that I can give you um, some really easy loan to get cash. It means that I can actually you know, enhance your workspace by supporting two of your, your children in terms of insurance. Good now, there's education, um, scholarship, you know. You must be able to work around those things and make sure that the doctors, it means legislation in some social clubs that of their interest. You, you have to work around that compensation that will make them stay beyond this time. Then, if you're talking about their training, quite a number of people have some that are trained now. For them to get placement, uh, placement, either for employment or husbandship, it's difficult. It's difficult. So if you train and you are not employing them, you are not deploying them, you know, you are not uh, giving them incentives, it will work. You have to be able to do that. If you look at the form for the level of the training, if you are giving them scholarship, if the university system where they are where, where they have been trained, yes, now recently the Minister of Health and Social Welfare had actually increased the number of doctors that can be trained in Nigeria, um, the trainable doctors. But right away, you have to actually go into those institutions and improve their capacity to train in, in, the, in, the, in the following ways. The number of lecturers, the spaces they are training in, the lecture room, the clinical rounds and everything. You have to improve all those things. Absolutely. Also, Absolutely, Dr. T. Um, I understand your fears, uh, especially when you, you, you hear persons uh, mention cases about having to wait for months to see a specialist. But let's not also forget that uh, this also happens in other climes. Very quickly, uh, talk to us about uh, what the consequences of this will be on the healthcare system if it is not addressed immediately. It, it, will, be, it will lead to a breakdown. Mm. Uh, because, you see, uh, many even older doctors, they are trying to leave. Or, in some instances, you have to actually call them back. Of course, it will, it will lead to a breakdown. The challenge is actually that you cannot respond to national health emergency. You cannot then be able to curtail chronic illnesses in your country. Mm. But what is the, the very, very low-hanging fruit that we have is actually to deploy health literacy. Mm. You know? Now, let the people know much about their health, what they can do personally, how to respond to their for sick, making people a mini doctor in a way. True mm. knowledge. We have to deploy that. Health communication, health literacy, you know, health education becomes actually one of the key uh, interventions that we can use while we're preparing to improve or increase the number of the doctors that should be in the country. Mm. So we have to do that. If we don't do that, then it's a big challenge. Okay? So uh, because anybody can force it anytime. That's right. And we we'll see any doctor or health worker to respond. To. Absolutely. Nigeria really needs to balance between the product, producing high quality health professionals for both local and you know, the global markets while they are also ensuring standard within their own country by addressing some of the challenges and um, you know, preferring solutions based on what you've actually said earlier. Public health consultant, Tuyi Mebamodu, thank you so much uh, for your keenness of insights this morning. Thank you always.